You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The Wide Area Augmentation System lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. Phil, first of all, welcome to Aero TV. And I got to tell you, it's been a while since we've had a chance to talk all things AirCam. But of all the aircraft that I've had the chance over the years to sample in bits and pieces and fly here and there, one of the ones that has endeared itself to me in, in no uncertain terms, how did the AirCam come to be? Back in the uh, 80s, I did some flying for uh, the Bartlett in, in Africa. And I did some flying for BBC and, and uh, some wildlife, uh, other wildlife film crews. And they kept wanting me to fly over unlandable terrain. And, and this was done in a drifter, single engine, of course. I enjoyed doing it. and We, we got some great pictures, some great uh, footage. Back then, it wasn't video, it was film. As I got older, I became less and less comfortable flying over that spectacular unlandable terrain. And I started dreaming of a twin that would enable me to fly on one engine with redundancy. And uh, I think when the geographic crew came to me that was working on that special about the Congo, the first one was Survivors of the Skeleton Coast, the one in the Congo was uh, Nindoki, last place on Earth. They wanted to fly over the rainforest, and they told me right out, there's no place to land. And they wanted to use a drifter, and I said, I just wasn't comfortable with that. So uh, I told them I'd been working on a concept for a twin-engine camera plane that would be able to fly on one engine. And they said, well, build us one. So basically we came to an agreement, and I built the first one for them. Did you expect the aircraft to have the life that it's had? No, I, I didn't, really didn't think about it. I, I, I thought I wanted one for myself, and I, wanted, I knew they wanted one, and I knew that's what they needed. We built it, and I, I was surprised at how well it worked right out of the box. Uh, and then we built a second prototype and we took it to Sign and Fun in Oshkosh and I was amazed with the, with the response. And uh, based on that response and interest, we decided to kit it and engineer it further for, for kit production. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. What kind of kit is this? This is a pretty heavy-duty builder because it's an extraordinarily stout aircraft. It's a fast-build kit. Uh, the parts are highly finished. Uh, we were fortunate in that we got uh, the F-8 accepted on the uh, on the kit list uh, back when that was easier to do. We have two versions of it uh, accepted on their list. One is a, a fast build kit, and the other is a fast build kit with a finished fuselage. I think it's a a, a great kit to to build. The manual is really awesome. Uh, we've had builders come back and report build times of between 600 hours and 1,500 hours. I'd say a thousand is a very honest uh, figure. What's the kind of person who attaches himself to an air camp? You know, we have a, a great group of owners. Most of them have become good friends. A large percentage of them are airline pilots. And, and I take airline pilots and I move them into two groups. The, the ones that fly for a living and do other things in their free time, you know, and they, they're not aviation nuts. And they may be good airline pilots, but... And then there's the other group that they're flying for a living, but when they're not flying, they're flying a Cub, they're flying an Air Cam, they're flying something. They just love to fly. And those are the guys that fall in love with the Air Cam. They, they want to be able to fly over that unlandable terrain, go out and explore and land anywhere, but they're used to having redundancy. And they really want to have the two engines. Well, this is one of the things that's remarkable about the aircraft. It's not just the fact that it's a twin-engine aircraft with the ability to carry on on one engine. It's the manner in which it carries on on one engine. That did not happen by accident. How did you come up with this? Well, we wanted the airplane to be easy to fly. And 
The trick is a lot of wing. We have a huge amount of wing area, so we're very lightly loaded. That enables us to fly and climb comfortably at low speed. At low speed, the drag isn't as much of a factor. So although it's a relatively draggy airplane, uh, we're able to perform low at low speed. So with the huge tail section, rudder and horizontal, uh, and, and the light wing loading, and at relatively high aspect ratio, 30, uh, 36 foot span, uh, it, it climbs well on one engine. It's easy to fly on one engine. It's remarkable. I mean, we're, we're really happy with the way it came out.